Up until this point, everything we've really done involving light has really been dealing with how it interacts with its surroundings. Well, in the next few videos, we're going to fill in these holes and figure out different ways that we can create light. And we've done one of these with uh, our AC circuit stuff in the past, but we're going to go a little bit more in depth on this. So, the first one we want to talk about, and what this video is going to concentrate on, is called black body radiation. And it might be something you've seen before, but if you haven't, uh, black body radiation really is the light that's uh, given off with an object at a certain temperature. Any object that has a temperature is going to be given off, giving off radiation. And the most general form of this equation is given by Planck's law. And historically, this was not the first. There was a couple different competing ones, and different wavelengths were covered uh, for different um, by different people, and not everything actually worked out. Planck came along, his was the one that actually solved all this mystery. And what it says is that the spectral radiance, B, is given by this factor out front, which is proportional to hc squared over lambda to the fifth, and multiplied by two, five, or two. And then there's this other factor in here, and this is one over an exponential function of e c over lambda k b times t. k b is the Boltzmann constant, lambda again is our wavelength. We'll notice that we have temperature, so this is the temperature of the object showing up. h being Planck's constant and c being the speed of light again. And minus one for uh, to complete out the equation. Well, kind of a complicated equation. Don't let it get you two down. It's easy to plug numbers into it. But really what's almost more important is what the graph looks like. So, as I said before, there was a couple cases before where people have tried to figure out what happens, and this was one of them. This is a classical theory. And classical theory for 5,000 degrees Kelvin would give us something like this. It looks like it gets pretty close down over on this side, but it gives what we call the ultraviolet catastrophe. So the more ultraviolet we go, the closer to the uh, lower wavelengths, the more that this thing becomes wrong. So Planck's law gives these wonderful black body curves where for a given temperature we look at its wavelength and we can see that um, you know right a little bit past five nanometers we peak for 5,000 degrees. A little right around 700 we peak for 4,000 and we have different values for it. There's a couple things to notice. You'll notice that as the wavelengths get, or as the temperature gets cooler, the wavelengths get longer. The peak wavelength gets longer. And also, as the temperature gets warmer, the more, the larger this peak is. It's not, maybe not as wide, but there's more area underneath this curve. And these are two things that are actually going to be related in two related fields. And the first of those two is called Wien's uh, Displacement Law which is simply written that the maximum wavelength is equal to b over t, where b is the Wien's displacement law um, constant, and t is the temperature. So our maximum wavelength is proportional to 1 over our temperature. So if we know a temperature, say human at 32 degrees Celsius, we convert that into Kelvin, so we can figure out what wavelength we radiate maximum, our maximum radiation happens at. We also could relate, um, if we know the maximum wavelength, say we take a spectrometer, measure the spectrum of, say, the sun, we can figure out that if the sun peaks in the green, right around 500 and change, 570 um, nanometers or so, that means we can get its temperature. So that's how we can figure out the temperature, for instance, of stars. And that's the same general principle of how um, I think uh, um, infrared uh, cameras work, is kind of on the same general principle. Uh, one thing we didn't mention, the, uh, in Planck's law, uh, the spectral radiance has units that are kind of interesting. And the spectral radiance units um, are the power divided by the area, the area of the emitter, divided by the uh, solid angle. So it's the amount of energy being released per second from one meter of source 
through an angle, so through a solid angle, which is called sol uh, stir radius. So, back to Wien's displacement law. If we notice, this is our peak temperature. Our temperature has a peak here, the warmer the, the object and the lower the, the wavelength. Kind of a nice little one. The other one is called Stefan Boltzmann's law, which says that the irradiance, another uh, quantity, is proportional to the fourth power of temperature. J, this, the irradiance, is equal to sigma times t to the fourth, where sigma is 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8 in MKS units. And if we look at the units, it's the power per area, and the uh, constant has uh, value 1 over temperature to the fourth. So this irradiance is the power emitted from an object per meter of surface area. So if we want to figure out the total power given off from an object, say the sun, we figure out the temperature of the sun, we have our constant, we figure out the surface area of the sun, and that'll tell us how much power the sun is producing, or how much energy every second the sun is producing. So uh, first uh, thing that we look at, black body radiation, is the first type of radiation we're going to look at. And we're going to actually look at a few others uh, in later videos. So good luck with these, and um, hopefully you learn that astronomers can actually get a lot of information from a simple graph.